people of Nature Center paths around the world. Join us through the week for a variety of shows discussing various topics celebrating the divine in all of its forms through nature worship, rituals, education, and building bridges of community. Unmuted. Welcome to Nature Spirituality with Selena Fox. And tonight we're going to explore 13 Beltane fires, rituals, meditations, and 13 types of Beltane fires that you can connect with at this ancient and contemporary Celtic pagan spring flowering fire festival. And I invite all of you who are listening live and those of you who are joining on my Selena Fox Updates Facebook page to join in this celebration of Beltane. In ancient times, Beltane was not a day and night, but more a period of several days and nights with a festival that had a variety of customs. Beltane is one of four Celtic fire festivals that mark the midpoints of equinoxes and solstices. This is the midpoint between spring equinox and summer solstice. In some traditions, Beltane and Samhain mark two halves of the year. Beltane being what's known as summer and Samhain beginning the half known as winter. In fact, the name for summer solstice, midsummer, comes from this division of the year into two halves rather than into four seasons. Some people celebrate Beltane on the full moon closest to the beginning of May in the Northern Hemisphere. And of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, Samhain is coming on at, as Beltane comes on. And Samhain itself is another one of the ancient Celtic fire festivals, as is Imolk at the beginning of February in the Northern Hemisphere, and Lunasa at the beginning of August in the Northern Hemisphere. Fire Festival. So obviously there's going to be some fire kindling, some celebration of fire. And what I'd like to do tonight is share with you some chants, some rituals, some lore, some approaches to celebrating Beltane with Beltane fires. Beltane fires burning bright. Bless us with your sacred light. Beltane fires on Beltane night. Ancient ways in pagan rite. Well, brand new Beltane fires chant. You can create your own and find a variety of Beltane songs and chants and celebrations online. And we have a Celebrating the Seasons guide at the Circle Sanctuary website. And we have a variety of Beltane information up at the Circle Sanctuary website and on our YouTube channel. And I've just put some more Beltane chants at my Selena Fox YouTube channel. I celebrate Beltane for multiple days and nights, and it's wonderful to be here with a bit of Beltane fire. I have one of my favorite forms of Beltane fire, which is a candle in a small cauldron. What I like about this, it's good for individual rites, and 
it can be used indoors. And this year, 2021, I am doing another new Beltane workshop, bringing in the May at home. And certainly, you can celebrate Beltane in a variety of different places. And for home environment rituals, if you aren't in a place where you can actually kindle a bonfire outside, and if you don't have a hearth fire, well, you can still have a Beltane fire in the form of a candle. And I like putting my Beltane fire candle in some type of iron cauldron, not only because it looks great, but it's a safety precaution. Which brings me to some basics about Beltane fire. When you are working with a powerful time, and Beltane is a powerful time, and a powerful element, fire is definitely a powerful element. It is really good to have a good plan in place for extinguishing any fire that is going places where it shouldn't be. So use some good fire safety as you prepare to kindle one or more Beltane fires. So what are the 13 fires of Beltane? Well, first of all, we have the original Beltane fire. And what is that? But the sacred sun. We celebrate the sun at Beltane time. In fact, some people say the name Beltane actually comes from Bel, a name of a sun god. Well, regardless of whether we can uh, take that viewpoint or not, having a Beltane sun shining on one or more of the days of Beltane can be a powerful way of connecting with Beltane fires. The warmth of the sun, the light of the sun, and the power of the sun. Beltane being in the center of the spring season and the beginning of the warmer half of the year in many locations is a time of rebirth, renewal, and transformation. And the fire of the sacred Beltane sun is underlying all the other types of Beltane fires. So what are some ways of working with the Beltane sun? The fire of sun. Greet the sun as it rises. There's a traditional chant. It comes from the UK. Howl and toe, jolly rumble we were up long before the day to welcome in the summer to welcome in the may a summer is a coming in and winter's gone away so this song it's the chorus of halito goes back hundreds of years we know that people got up to watch the Beltane sun rise, to celebrate it. Some people would kindle Beltane bonfires on high hills to greet the sun as it rises. And of course, Beltane fires are also kindled at night as part of long-standing traditions in villages and communities in gatherings. Uh, during this pandemic time, I'm doing this workshop on CSNP, my Nature Spirituality podcast, as well as on my main Facebook page. Many people are still staying indoors because of the pandemic. Well, you can still 
celebrate the fires of Beltane. Some are actual fires uh, that you kindle, and some are fires that you envision and work with. So greet the sun at Beltane time. If you're not into or able to get up before the sun rises or you are in a cloudy zone, you can still greet the brightening of the day. You can greet that Beltane sun at any time during the day. And as you greet the Beltane sun, you may want to do some kind of a chant. Beltane sun shining forth, bringing light and joy and warmth. Beltane sun shining forth, bringing light and joy and warmth. So you can greet the sun wherever it may be in the sky and even if it may not be fully visible, the light of the Beltane sun with a chant such as that. You may want to hold your hands up as you turn towards the sun and call on the Beltane fiery sun to bless you and connect with you. Draw the power of the sun down into yourself. Experience yourself being blessed and balanced and energized with the Beltane sun. The Beltane sun also is a powerful way of blessing objects that you use yourself or you may be gifting to others. You may want to have an altar outside as part of a Beltane celebration and to have one or more objects that are going to be blessed with the sun, with the light of Beltane. So the fire of the sun shining on crystals, on jewelry, on flower arrangements, on new plants. These are all things that you can bless with the Beltane fire of sun. I think it's also wonderful as the sun is setting on Beltane day or days that you honor the sun at sunset and continue your celebration with another kind of Beltane fire, the kindling of a flame. So I'm going to talk about the triplicity of Beltane flames. We have the Beltane flame that is candle flame, a small fire that can be put in a votive holder, if it's like a tea light, or within some kind of a small iron cauldron, such as I am using in this workshop. Or if you're in a place that cannot have actual living flames, now there's a variety of battery operated tea lights and pillar candles. So you can still have a Beltane fire, but using the fire of electricity rather than the actual flame. Many people will have a Beltane bonfire. And clearly in pandemic times, this was a central part of our Beltane celebrations at Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve. In fact, we not only had one gigantic bonfire, but some years we had multiple bonfires. Now, some of the lore about Beltane fires from ancient times, fires were kindled atop hillsides and a whole series of fires kindled and as one roamed on Beltane night, it the skies literally would be lit up with 
glowing fire. So Beltane fire in the form of large bonfires. So this is a community Beltane fire. Now, one of the things that you can do with a Beltane fire for community is to have everyone who's taking part in the ceremony to bring some dried herbs or pieces of wood or some other burnables and put them in the fire area before the fire is kindled. It is a good idea if you are having a large bonfire, even if there's no fire ban or whatever going on in your area, and be sure to check about um, what the conditions are and whether you're allowed to kindle fires outside wherever you may be dwelling and having your Beltane celebration. Wildfires, unfortunately, um, while they can be restorative if done in a structured way, uh, too often with climate change, global warming, drought conditions, fires escape and um, really do a lot of damage. So you want to have a safe um, bonfire if you're going to have a big bonfire. Now, some people will kindle their Beltane bonfires in some kind of fire bowl, such as um, you'll find in stores that have patio equipment and that kind of thing. And we've used that as a Beltane fire holding device when we have done our candlelight labyrinth. And we have a spiral labyrinth at Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve. And in addition to having a large bonfire on the main night of our multi-day and multi-night festivals, where we're dancing and drumming and having all sorts of great fun during the ritual, as well as in the post-ritual revels, we also have a smaller bonfire in the center of our spiral labyrinth. And the... Beltane flames that are in candle form, torchlight form, lantern form, are lighting the entire spiral up with a bonfire in the center. So some additional ideas of working with the triplicity of Beltane flames. We have the flames of candles, the flames of bonfires, and we have the flames in motion. What are flames in motion? In some traditions, in addition to having a large bonfire for community celebrations and individuals having candles that they may be holding, there may be those who are processing with torches, with lanterns. It's flame in motion. A really powerful event that's connected with Beltane is the Edinburgh Fire Festival in Scotland. It is an amazing blend of fire festival with all sorts of fire. Not only big fire, but there are fire spinners and torch lights and people dancing with flames. So fire at night is something that is part of a magic rite and traditions that go back hundreds and probably thousands of years, depending on the version of Beltane lore that you connect with. So we have candle flames, flames in motion, and big bonfires. So what kind of magic can you do with these Beltane fires? They represent the fire of the sun, and the heart of the season. And that brings me to some additional types of Beltane fires. 
and these can be symbolic or done with flames. We have the fire of purification and release. We have the fire of renewal and rebirth. We have the fire of hearth and home. So let's take a look at the fire of purification and release. With this kind of fire, energetically, and if you are able to have a living flame where you can safely burn things, have the fire be a place where you do rituals of release and cleansing of transformation. Now, something that's very common in using fire in this way, not just at Beltane time, but across the whole yearly cycle, is to have some paper and write down something that you want to dismiss from your life. It might be a habit you want to dispel, some outmoded way of being, some negative thinking that pops up, something that you want to symbolically and actually cleanse yourself from. The whole act of creating the burnable for a fire of purification and release can be its own kind of ritual. Some will do a ritual, sit, meditate, do some type of trance work, and then for some people, they make a whole list of things they want to dispel. And then to not only write them out if you can, or some people like to use a symbol or a combination of that, but in so doing, to actually use the burnable, which paper I find is really good. Some people get fancy and use flash paper, like you can get at a magic, stage magic shop, where when it gets lit, it kind of goes poof, and that's really cool looking. <laughs> but um, paper that's dry and is of a size that you can safely put into a burning area um, is good. Now you can crumple it up when the time comes or you can shred it and throw it in. I'll leave that up to you. And as you are taking the burnable that carries your intention of what you want cleansed, you energize that and then in the ritual of purification and release with Beltane fire, as you cast it in, chant, release, be gone, release, be gone, release, be gone. And as you do that, or some other similar chant, envision what you are looking to dispel, burning up. Now, one of the techniques that I've used for a Beltane fire of purification and release is after casting in the burnable that represents what you want to be dispelled is to cast in some purifying herbs. Dried rosemary leaves, really a powerful thing. Of course, one of my favorite herbs, I love rosemary as well, but I live in northern climes and it is not shrubbery around here. It's a house plant. So if you, if you keep it year round, you have to carry it in and out, um, is mugwort. And while mugwort has been linked with the moon and the summer solstice, it's also an all-round good, purifying, magical, and transformational and envisioning herb. So casting some purifying herbs into the fire after you have burnt the symbol of what you want to dispel is not only a way of aiding that process, but herbs typically have a wonderful aroma 
when they burn, dried herbs in the fire. Now, some people like European sage or um, some type of prairie sage or some other type of Artemisia. Mugwort is Artemisia vulgaris. And so there's a variety of different types of herbs that you can cast into the fire. And then after you've done your release work and some purification with some herbs, then allow yourself to sit and reflect, to meditate, pay attention to what guidance, inspiration comes to you about how you can move ahead to manifest what you have just given to the Beltane fire of purification and release. Now related to this fire, in fact, some people do this fire ritual following up with the Beltane fire of purification and release. And that is the Beltane fire of renewal and rebirth. And with this, the fire has been a fire of cleansing. Then herbs are put, or sacred woods or both, are put into the fire. The fire transforms into a fire of healing, of resilience, of renewal, of rebirth. And with this, the focus is on filling your life full of vitality and good energy and celebration and inspiration to really feel the renewal, to let the fire help you grow and glow. So in addition to these magical fires of Beltane, there is the Beltane fire of good fortune. Now, you can follow up this release and purification, renewal and rebirth, the same fire, you can turn it into a fire of good fortune. And with this, you may want to dance around the fire Certainly, that's something that is a wonderful way of keeping alive an old Beltane tradition. But what is most associated with a Beltane fire of good fortune is that of leaping the Beltane fire. Now, there's some practicalities about this and having done Beltane festivals pre-pandemic in person since the pandemic, we've been online, so we've had to get creative about that. But when we've been in person with the fire, we've created not a big conical fire such as we use for our big bonfires, which sometimes are, you know, 15 to 20 feet tall. No, we have a low fire a rectangular fire, we actually dig a trench, a small trench, and fill it with dried mugwort stalks or some other really dry brush. And we use that for our jumping fires. Yes, the Beltane fire of good fortune is typically jumped over. Now, in our community, we have people of various ages and physical abilities, and not everyone is really in a space of jumping over the fire. So the alternative to that is to walk by the fire and to place one's hands over the flames, and that's a way of doing it. Um, one of the fun things about the fire leaping is that we, and I look forward when we can do Beltane in person again, and hopefully in 2022 we'll do that. 
We actually have people, this is after we dance the maypole and we have the main ritual and we've kindled the big bonfire. Then we have a whole area where we have the fire leaping and these lower um, fire pits, which even very young children with parental supervision can at least put their hands over or be carried over by an adult or leap over if they're really good athletes. So we had people jumping the fire together, couples jumping the fire, um, whole families jumping the fire, um, groups of people, covens and groves and nests and temples that have come to our festival, all jumping the fire together. Well, we're in a time of pandemic right now with social distancing and even though people are now vaccinated and some going to some outdoor events, still good to, um, to exercise some good caution and whatever. So jumping a fire, a Beltane fire for good luck is not only something that's a widespread custom today, it has its roots back into the ancient past. In fact, it was said that in some places, two fires were kindled on either side of an area with sacred woods, including some herbs or woods that are used to fumigate, get rid of insects and disease and that type of thing. And it was a tradition in some places in Scotland and other parts of Europe and some people do this today in the USA and other places where cattle are driven between two fires. So they aren't jumping over the fires, but there's a lot of smoke of sacred herbs and wood in the fire that's fumigating. Well, that's a fire of purification and some herbs in there for healing. That's the fire of healing, well-being and renewal. And this was considered good luck. So the triplicity once again. So another form of being able to have that triplicity of release, of energizing, and then the prosperity and good fortune. You can all do that with one fire or with several fires as part of your transformation. Now, if you're in a place where having these fires outside are not an option, then I would invite you to set up an altar and have a fire that you kindle and to work with that fire as a living representation of a Beltane fire and then to speak what you want to release into that fire and to speak that which you wish to attract and be energized into that fire and speak into the fire some phrase for good luck. Bona fortuna, bona fortuna. Yes, I know that's Latin and it's something that the Romans did. And the Romans and the Celts didn't always get along to say the least. However, we are now in 21st century pagan life and it's become multicultural and universal in many places. And Circle Sanctuary, which is the pagan um, organization and land and ministry series that I've been helping to birth and now many people are part of. Um, we bring together people from many different nature spirituality paths. And so we have versatility. So we've now talked about Beltane Sun. We've talked about the flames in motion, such as fire spinning and candlelight processions small fires in a candle and large fires that are bonfires. And we've talked about the triplicity of fires of release and purification, 
of healing, renewal, well-being, and good fortune. What's the next triplicity we're going to work with? Well, the fire of the green wood. The fire of the green wood is taking fire in a different form, the fire of the sun that activates and nurtures the green world. And literally, if you do the custom that was so um, widespread across Europe that there were songs written about it and continues to be a Beltane custom to this day, which is now global, um, being celebrated wherever Beltane is celebrated around the world, the idea of connecting with the life force in nature, the fire of the greenwood. You will notice new sprouts of leaves. You will see if you are able to go out and harvest, of course, connecting with the spirit of the plant in good ways before you do your harvest. But literally, people would go into the greenwood and harvest greenery from shrubs and trees. And when you clip, you'll see some green under most plants, actually in the wood, the new shoots that are coming up. And the green wood has the fire of life in it. And why it's so valued at Beltane time is it's the solar fire as fire that enhances life. Bringing greenery into one's home, bringing greenery into a ritual space if you're celebrating with others, whether it be at home or at sacred area, that is another powerful way of connecting with the fires of Beltane. One of my favorite ways of connecting with the fire of Greenwood is not only going out and harvesting some Greenwood, but especially at twilight and right before dawn, when we're between the day and the night the dark and the light. There is a kind of twilight and pre-dawn magic. If you are developing skills or perhaps they're already well-developed in terms of being able to recognize the life essence that humans and plants and creatures and places have, whether you call it aura, or life force, it's a really good time to look for it. And at Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve, one of my favorite Beltane activities that I've facilitated for others as well as done myself, including this Beltane, is to actually be out and to look at the greenery and its energy feeling its energy, connecting with its energy. So part of the reason for going into the Greenwood was not only to harvest some decorations for the local village, for the pagan temple, for one's home, but it was to get out into the Greenwood with all of that life force in great abundance. Related to the fire of the Greenwood is the fire of the blossoms. Yes, the flowering that's connected with Beltane, head wreaths, crowns, circles of flowers. That's a kind of Beltane fire. Bright colors, blooms, feeling that life force being present in all of nature. Well, what's the third part of the triplicity of this life force just bursting forth at Beltane time. We've got it in the woods, we've got it in the flowers, and we've got it in human life. Yes, the fire of sexuality, sensuality, and good times. So the passion fire. 
And certainly Beltane has quite a reputation. Wow, it's a fertility festival. After all, the height of the springtime, you've got greenery, you've got flowers, you've got the green god and the green goddess in some traditions. You've got um, Jack in the Green and the May Queen in some traditions. Well, you have a union of the male and the female, the goddess and the god, or if you're from a tradition that goes beyond gender or is gendered fluid, well, you connect with the magic of love. Indeed, we have a tradition at the Circle Sanctuary Beltane Festival of having a May court, and we have a May queen, a May king, and a May couple. And why do we have the May couple? Because people's sexual orientation and gender identity is diverse in our community. So this is a way of being able to have a coupling representing the union of earth and sky, of God and goddess, of female and male, of day and night, the union of duality, the fluid um, reality of this. In fact, Morris dancing, which is a kind of English folk dancing, is connected with this triplicity of life force that's connected with Beltane, the green wood. Many Morris dancers dance with sticks, they clap them together, tap the ground to call the life force up into the community, into the fields. Flowers, often wearing flowers as part of costume. And then there are certain dances which celebrate the goddess and the god and their unity. And there's a character known as the Betty, which is... And in the case of, uh, for many years, the Oak Apple Morris dancers who have come pre-pandemic to Circle Sanctuary Beltane Festivals for more than 20 years. A lot of their traditions come from UK, uh, Cornwall, and some of the villages in England. Um, they had a Betty, which is a very large man. Now he has crossed over into another world, full beard, gray beard, dressed in a pink dress and a parasol. And the Betty was a living representative of male and female combined. And in some other Morris dancing troops, you will have some form of the Betty. Sometimes it may be a female that's in male garb, and sometimes it may be an image that is carried forth that represents that unity. Earth and sky, earth and sky, God and goddess unify. So for this form of Beltane fire, the Beltane fire of passion, of life force in nature, of the blooms, it's at the heart of the festival. So we now have another triplicity, and that's the Beltane fire of inspiration. This is such a powerful time to enhance creativity, to, whether you're a bard or not, to really allow yourself to nurture your creative life. Now, this can take the form of kindling a Beltane fire. And if you do some form of creative work, an arts, a crafts, or perhaps your creative work is problem solving in some realm, to do a fire gazing. And as you gaze at the fire, experience yourself connecting with that light. And then imagine 
that you have flames coming out of your head. What? What's that about? Well, the Celts called it fire in the head, another name for the fire of creative inspiration. And many of you know that I, I am aligned with a number of sacred forms, but one of those forms is Bridget, the goddess of inspiration and bards and healing and transformation and the forge and many different things. But that bardic dimension of fire in the head is something that can be done at any of those fire festivals as a way of connecting with the sacred fire. In addition to the fire of creativity and inspiration, I invite you to kindle a fire of divination, of seeing into the present, into the past, into the future. Our spiral labyrinth that we candlelight and have a big fire in the center. Sometimes it's a fire bowl, sometimes it's a cauldron with a candle in it. Often we will have a divination form such as rune stones or oracle cards or tarot cards. And as one walks the spiral labyrinth kindled with candles on Beltane night and goes to the center, a time of meditating with the central flame, calling for guidance, gazing into that flame, and then doing a form of divination to get guidance for self, for the next turning of the wheel. So we have the fire of divination and inner life. Well, there's one other fire that I have to share with you, which is the fire of freedom. I see that Beltane is a powerful time. And of course, Samhain, which is the shadow side of Beltane, just as Beltane is the shadow side of, of Samhain. This is a time to work for personal and community freedom, yes, but most importantly, the fire of freedom so that there is equality, liberty, and justice for all. So you may want to kindle a Beltane fire in connection with a ritual. It may be a torch, it may be a small cauldron with a flame such as I have here. And call to mind the importance of freedom and envision paganism having equal rights, not only in the country where you are, but around the world and since humans are starting to go off planet beyond. So Beltane Fires of Freedom, another wonderful way of celebrating Beltane. So now I'd invite you to take a few moments and center yourself for we're going to have a Beltane journey. Imagine yourself gathered with others around a Beltane bonfire. Imagine yourself in the sacred circle of Beltane fire. And those of us 
who are joining in this community Beltane Fire meditation. Let us recognize that as we are imagining ourselves in the cyberspace, the cyber fire, the electricity that makes cyber connection possible, podcasting and live streaming on social media, our circle is part of multitudes of circles at this Beltane time in the Northern Hemisphere. And yes, we link our circle with those who are celebrating Samhain in the Southern Hemisphere. Experience yourself as part of a living tradition of Beltane fires. For we can talk about the Beltane fires of the past, and that's an important thing to know. But we also need to be aware of the Beltane fire of the present. We are a living tradition. And how we celebrate Beltane with fire will be something that we can pass on, especially the best practices forms of this, to those who are yet to come. Beltane fire burning bright, bless us with your sacred light. Beltane fire, ancient bright, bless us with inner sight. I invite you to consider yourself as part of the living Beltane fires traditions, keeping alive the Beltane fire of the sun, the Beltane fire that is candle flame, the Beltane fire that is Flames in motion, the Beltane fire that is bonfire, bale fires, the Beltane fire that is fire of purification and release, the Beltane fire that is renewal and well being, the Beltane fire that is good fortune. The Beltane fire, that's the life force in the greenwood. The Beltane fire, that is the bloom of blossoms. The Beltane fire, that is sexuality, sensuality, and passion. The Beltane fire, that is community that is our freedom, that is divination and inspiration. So 13 Beltane fires for your Beltane this year. And so what do you carry from this workshop into this Beltane and beyond? Hopefully you will come up with a way to work with one or more of these Beltane fires in a personal way. For having a personal practice at Beltane is a way of growing in these ancient ways in contemporary times. And I invite you to have a Beltane fire with a loved one, with others. Have a Beltane fire in your home, and those others may be creature companions, of course, if you have living flames, 
and you have some that are not uh, creatures that aren't very fire aware. Make sure you contain the fire in a way that you won't have um, furry babies flamboing <laughs> or creating a problem. But fire in the home, in your hearth. And fire in community. Well, we have had a Beltane fire in this workshop as we all have envisioned the community fire and work together for our celebration in cyberspace. One of the things I would encourage you to do is to take a photograph of one or more Beltane fire images that you use, actual flame, or perhaps you sketch a flame or a Beltane image with fire or a sun image, or you have a favorite picture or painting or an altar with a Beltane fire image on it to not only record that for your own personal journey through life and spiritual work, but to share it on social media. Yes, that's one way we can have Beltane fires on the hillsides for community to see is to post our Beltane fires in cyberspace, in social media. And be sure to share Beltane greetings with friends. And Beltane is a time of transformation. It's a time for meditation, for reflection, and yes, inner sight through divination. And Beltane is a time for fun. So in whatever way or ways that you work with Beltane and Beltane fires this Beltane time, know that you not only are keeping alive an ancient Beltane tradition because of the fire festival at the heart of Beltane, but you are part of the living Beltane traditions that continue to be here on this planet and that are creating foundations for Beltane's future. So be safe, be well, be joyful, and have a blessed Beltane. We give thanks to the Beltane fires, the fire of the sun, the fire of candles, the fire in motion, the fire of bonfire. We give thanks to the fire of life for us in the green wood, in the blossoms, and in sensual rites. We give thanks for the Beltane fires of inspiration, of transformation, renewal, and good luck. We give thanks for the Beltane fire of purification and community freedom. We give thanks, we give thanks, we give thanks for Beltane fire of good fortune, of transformation, of good times.
times. Bright Beltane blessings. Bright Beltane blessings. Bright Beltane blessings. Thanks to all of you who have joined in live and to all who join in later. And a special thanks to Circle Sanctuary Ministers, David and Jeanette Ewing, who do engineering and podcast station management, and to our other podcasters. We have Laura, who also does our Facebook page, CSN Podcast, and Deborah Rose, and to Casey, who does our social media coordination. For more information about Circle Sanctuary, find us on the web, circlesanctuary.org. Find us on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. And if you'd like to celebrate Beltane some more and get some more ideas, I have a free guide to celebrating Beltane at the Circle Sanctuary website. Go under teachings and celebrate the seasons. And I've got chance links to past podcasts. I've got all sorts of rituals and lore and things that you can use. Plus, I'm putting information up at my Selena Fox Updates YouTube channel and will be posting on Selena Fox Instagram, Selena underscore Fox on Twitter, and Selena Fox Updates, where I'm doing this live stream. So may we all find good ways to look to the past, to the present, and the future, recognizing that we are all part of the greater circle of nature and ancient ways, now contemporary, that celebrate the seasons and bring about more love, more light, more freedom, more joy. So be it. Happy Beltane.